Hello, everyone. This is Brad Johnson, reporter with The Texan. I've got Comptroller Glenn Hager here with me. How's it going? It's great to be with you. It's awesome today. He's coming right off the stage. Just gave a, a speech at the RPT convention. Um, we'll hop right into it. But, uh, you know, the state of Texas, as you full well know, has ha had kind of a rocky, at points, fiscal time. Um, where are we at right now? What does the budget surplus or projected budget surplus look like? Yeah, right now the economy is really remarkable. It has been really for the last year plus. You know, obviously two years ago businesses got shut down. People weren't sure what was going on. And I'd made the point then. I said, look, Texas entered into that unknown in a really strong foundation, stronger than really every other state and nation mm -hmm. in the world. So we were blessed. The economy rebounded pretty strong businesses, consumers. Now, of course, with all that said, for the last year plus, as we all know, people have been dealing with three things if you own a business. Inflation, supply chains, and labor shortages. And of course, that inflation is really the highlight for all of us as consumers. Yeah. And so my point being is ever since really February last year, for about, you know, the last 14, 15 months, Texas has really just been on a remarkable pace, stronger than we could have anticipated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now the economy is not as strong. You know, people are really concerned yeah. with the direction of the economy. And I, and I still make that same point I did a couple years ago. I don't know where we're going right now, but we've got some drags against us, but the economy is good. And so if you look at the next legislative budget cycle, when they get back in in, in 2023, our state's savings account, the ES, ESF, Economic Stabilization Fund, which is oil and gas revenues, that fund will probably have, as of this summer, we're going to announce it'll have about $13.5 billion in okay. it here in the next couple months when we close this fiscal year. And the state treasury, I'd said last year, will probably have a surplus of about $12 billion. In fact, another couple months, we'll give an update. And I would suppose probably you're going to add at least 3 or $4 billion to okay. that. So, I mean, it is remarkable. Now, I'll make this point. Yeah. Last month, when we announced our revenues for last month, I made the point to my staff. I said, when we send the press release out, we had noted that our sales tax revenues, mm -hmm. which is the biggest amount of revenue, as you know, coming in the state treasury of yep. all important pieces, was almost 9% higher than the same month last year. But the problem was inflation was over 8%. And so, yes. you know, I'm just trying to make that point as you and I struggle at our household paying for gas and groceries that have gone up so much. Yeah. I just begin to manage expectations. Revenues are higher, but unfortunately now, because of this administration and their terrible policies, so much cost have gone up yeah. as well. And we saw it initially when the pandemic hit, really dire projections. Right. Uh, but those have since uh, really improved, as you, as you said. Substantially. And we'll see, yes, and we'll see where it goes now that we've, we're seeing rapid inflation and all these other issues. Included among them is oil and gas energy stuff. Uh, something your office has been working on is uh, SB 13, yep. right, from last year. Uh, that prohibits state money from going to companies that choose, that divest from right. fossil fuel companies. Um, part of that has been sending out letters and assessing the situation. What are you seeing on the ground level on this stuff and so, you what know, are you it, hearing it, from it's companies? It's really interesting as we have implemented this legislation. So in, in short, we are required to come up with a list of companies that are so-called boycotting the oil and gas sector. In other words, financial institutions that are not lending or doing business with the with the oil and gas industry. And we know, we all know already that the policies coming out of D.C. and other countries as though we're going to get off fossil fuels tomorrow. Well, I mean, as you and I stand here, we're standing on shoes. And what are they made out of? Fossil fuels. I make the point, if you want to have an electric vehicle, okay, but when you sit in the car and you grab the door, what do you touch? A fossil fuel product. When you yeah. touch the steering wheel, it's a fossil fuel product. Whether it's the wires that are coated in the car, the batteries are wrapped in, what? Fossil fuel products. And so everywhere we touch, how do you think food gets on the table? Farmers need diesel. Farmers need all these products that are mm -hmm. based out of fossil fuels. And so point being is, it's disastrous policies to, that the this administration and others are leading. And so what we have determined because of pressures from so many politicians on the other side, this naive belief, you have major institutions that either one or bar boycotting or number two, what we've really discovered is they're telling everybody in essence they are when in reality they're trying to hide behind the curtain and say, no, actually, we're investing in oil and gas. And so what I told my staff last year as we were working on this, I said, so there's the big lie, the big lie. 
And the big lie is a lot of, some of these companies put everything out that is all non-fossil fuel when in reality they still are. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we're working through that process now. Do you list them or do you not list them? But either way, if they're not really truly boycotting, but they are still what I think is a dangerous propaganda on their part because people fully believe we are having a fossil fuel fossil free environment mm. and we're not and so you know my point is we just have to be responsible and so yeah. we're going to put out that list later this summer probably okay so we sent out letters to 19 financial institutions as well as another 140 that in essence are asking do you have a fund that people can invest in like their 401k or a 529 account for a kid that you're going to send to college and so those funds may be solely non-fossil fuel oriented and mm -hmm. we'll list those. So I think there's kind of a combination of companies out there is my point, yeah. but I do think that the rhetoric regardless is dangerous. Yeah. Even if they're not, it's bad rhetoric because people believe this and we're continuing to have a perpetuation of those policies in DC, which guess what? Are in part contributing to the problem we have at the pump today. Yeah. You know, this administration says, oh no, it's transitory. Oh, no, it doesn't exist. Oh, no, it's Putin's fault. When in reality, it's a lot of their disastrous policies yeah. and their fault. Real quick, the biggest name in this is BlackRock, um, it, the world's largest portfolio manager. What, are, what have they been telling you guys when you're assessing this? Yeah, you know, it's really amazing because their CEO, Larry Fink, if you ever listen to the guy, oh, my gosh. I mean, he acts like he's the king. And, you know, it's just it's unbelievable rhetoric that comes out. Now, many other companies, them included, will come in and say, no, 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 look at what we're doing over here. And so, you know, that that I think you got two kind of groups, in other words, mm -hmm. really three groups. One, that those that are not, that are truly invested in fossil fuels and, and looking at things from a financial perspective. Is it a good investment? Is it not a good investment? That's what we should be looking at. That's yeah. it. That's it. Is it prudent for the people that we're investing their money? And then you have the group that is actually saying one thing and doing another. Mm -hmm. And then you got the third group that is actually boycotting. And so we're going through all their responses right now. And I hope I'm going to have a meeting with my staff here in the next week or two. We go through the next round. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get this list out here in the next couple of months. But it, it, it's really disappointing that, you know, I think if a company, whatever you do, just let transparency and the truth show it. Yeah. Just be transparent. Yeah. You know, don't say one thing and do another. I mean, that's what I tell my kids. If you believe something, then say it. Yeah. Stand for where your ground is. That's okay. I mean, I just, it's unbelievable. Light does really good for a lot of things. Transparency is great. And this is one where the more we've worked on it, transparency is really needed very bad here. Yeah. Reading through the letters that you guys got, there was one company that said, hell yeah, we're doing this. We're boycotting. And, and they're and, proud of it. And, <laughs> and to me, I told my staff that if that's where they stand and that's their policies, I respect that. I would not invest in them, yeah. nor would we, because I think that's the wrong policy. But in fact, I respect the fact that they said, yeah, we are, this is what we do, and we're proud of it, then we can have, then, you know, if you stand on one side and I stand on another, that's a healthy discussion. Yep. But if we don't, we lie to each other, what kind of world is that? Yeah. Well, you guys over at the Comptroller's office have a lot of plates spinning, and it'll be interesting to see how all this shakes out, but Comptroller Hager, thank you for stopping by. Good to be to with, with you today. You. Appreciate all the work that y'all are doing. Y'all are doing a lot of important work here thank in the you. state, and we've interacted with you, Brad, a whole lot over yeah. the course of the last year on a lot of issues, and so I just want to say thank you thank really you. much. Appreciate it's been great all the light and the transparency y'all are putting out. It's been great to get to know you and your staff. It's been wonderful. Appreciate so. it. Good to be with you today. Yeah.